The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth remain silent before him. Will you please stand with me this morning for the call of worship? And if you would, if you would repeat after me, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Praise ye the Lord. All ye nations. Praise him all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night standeth in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands into the sanctuary and bless the Lord, the Lord that made the heavens and the earth. Bless thee out of Zion. God bless you. We'll turn it over to the response.
good day to serve the Lord because this is the day that the Lord has made and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it Father God we thank you for another opportunity to come to the house of the Lord I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord because I know in the house of the Lord we'll find joy, peace, and everything you need is in the house of the Lord. And the reason we're here is because of one person who died for our sins. It's not for any form or fashion, but to lift up the name that's above every name. And that's the name of Jesus. And Father God, as we start a new chapter, help us to remember the past but not live in the past, but to go forward in the way that you have for us to go at the church. We pray for it that we can be on one accord, lifting up that name of Jesus, and be affected in this Pittsburgh community. Folks are dying sometimes right on the church steps because the enemy is at work. But you said what well, sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And you also said if your people were to call by your name, would we'll humble ourselves and pray. Seek your face. Turn from our sin. You will heal this land. The sinners are doing what sinners do, but we are not doing our job. Father God, encourage us. Give us boldness to speak your word today. Give us wisdom to win souls, to get this place filled up with people on fire for you. And Father God, we pray for those that are traveling to get here for traveling mercies. Keep them from hurt, harm, or danger. We pray for those that are sick and shut in. As I remember my sister Phyllis, as she goes in for surgery on Monday, 
on her birthday. Father God, be with her right now. Comfort her, take away any fear she may have, and let her know that you in control. Go before her and pat away. Make the doctor's hand steady and give them wisdom to do this thing the way you want it done. And not just her, Father, anybody that's sick, we pray for them this morning. Get them grace to, be, to endure sickness. Get them comfort for pain. If the sickness is not unto death, we ask that you heal them today, Father God. And then, Father God, as we come down to the service today, I not the choir to sing, praise God, words from heaven. And Father God, I pray also as the man of God come forth with the word from heaven. You say man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. Father, give him what we need to be affected in this world. Our help is not coming from the White House. It's coming from the church house. Help us to focus on you, to meditate on you, and magnify you and not our problems. And then, Father God, when we said our last prayer, we read our last scripture, we know that you've already gone to prepare a place for us, that where you are, we may be also. And we thank you for that right now, Father God. In your son Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. church say amen. amen church say amen again amen. one more time say amen. amen amen we're thankful to the lord for this day and all of you god's children who come into the house of beth el this is the house of the lord amen. amen and we welcome you to worship the lord in spirit and in truth amen i want to say before we move on to the uh, him, I want to say to the Iconium Baptist Church to say thank you uh, for uh, following the Lord's lead in selecting me as your next pastor. Um, this is a relationship that we believe will will grow over time, and a relationship uh, that would certainly be a long-lasting marriage between the two. We are happy on the behalf of my wife. And I, we're happy, and I, my daughter, we are happy to be uh, in the family of Iconium. And we look forward to some great times together in the Word of God. And so we're, we're going to, amen, praise God. So we're, we're going to have an opportunity to delve deep into the Word of God and, and to share and to learn and to find out what our purpose is that God has for us and the plan uh, that he has for the Iconium Baptist Church. And so I want to say that to you, and I'll say a little bit more perhaps a little later, but I am so elated. In fact, I couldn't even sleep last night. I woke up at 3 a.m., at 4 a.m., at 5 a.m., and then finally at 6 a.m. At about 4 a.m., I was rehearsing the sermon, and I said to the Lord, I couldn't go to sleep. So, Lord, I need to get some rest. So please help me to get to sleep. Um, so we're thankful and we're excited about being here. Hope you're as, as excited as we are 
and being in this, um, in this new season, this new time where God has, has joined us together. And so we're just happy and we thank God for that. I'm going to sit down and we're going to have a hymn uh, and then uh, we'll have a scripture by Reverend Longino and then a prayer of intercession will be by Reverend Vincent. We'll, we'll follow the program as follows. This is one of my favorites. We'll understand it better by and by. We are often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Somber skies and howling tempests Often to see the bright sunshine In that land of perfect day When the mist have rolled away We will understand it better by and by Oh, by and by well, when the morning comes, when all of all the saints are without a gathering home, and we will tell the story of oh, how we overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, often does the tune of the things that life demands. Want of food and want of shelter, thirsty hills and the barren land. We are trusting in the Lord and according to his word. We will understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by, well, when the morning comes, when all of all, all the saints are gathering home, and we will we'll tell the story, we'll how we overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Mm -hmm. It's dark on every hand And we cannot understand All the ways that God would lead us To that blessed promised land But He'll guide us with desire And we'll follow till we die Oh, we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, by. Put your hands together. Yeah. When the morning comes, when all of them, all, all the saints, will all together in home, and we will, we'll tell the story. Well, how we overcome and we'll understand it better by and by come on let's sing it oh, 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 by and by yeah. when the morning comes when all all all, all the saints of God are gathering home and we will tell we'll tell the story of yeah how we overcome and we'll can we do that one more time one more time by and by yeah yeah I said mm -hmm. by and by when, when the morning comes when all of all, all the saints of God are gathering home and we will tell we'll tell the story yeah 
we overcome and we'll understand it better by and by. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. We'll understand it better by and by. We may not understand it all now, but by and by. And will. Good morning and welcome to the Iconia Baptist Church. We are so glad that you have chosen this place of worship to honor the Lord's name with us. If you are new to this church, we would like to thank you for worshiping with us and we warmly welcome you into Iconia Baptist Church as our brother and our sister in Christ. On behalf of our senior pastor, C.L. Jordan, and our associate minister, Reverend Jeffrey Benson, we would like to extend to you the most warm and Christian welcome, and we would like to say welcome, welcome, and welcome. Amen. Hallelujah! 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 
Amen. Give him the highest praise. I want to, before the scripture is read, to uh, let you know that there are some technical difficulties. Um, so uh, we're not able to live stream, I believe is what you mean. Oh, it is live streaming. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, well, just the screens here are not, uh, not working, so uh, we'll, we'll move right along with that. I want to just, uh, your announcements, we want you to govern yourselves accordingly to the announcements that are printed in the program, but we do want to pray for Sister Phyllis Vincent as she prepares on tomorrow uh, for surgery, so please be in prayer for her uh, during that time that God would heal and God will restore. And then there are condolences to uh, Miss, uh, Mrs. Peggy uh, Lindsay, uh, the wife of Deacon Randolph Lindsay, the passing of her mother, Mrs. Carolyn Hawkins of Benton Harbor, Michigan. Let's keep them in our prayers. Uh, I think there is a birth date uh, on this coming week. Uh, Sister Stephanie Willock, his birthday is on uh, the 22nd of September. Somebody point back there. Somebody, oh, she's right there. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear. All right, all right. Happy birthday. Also, I want to, there's a, a thank you. I want to do this now. Uh, there's a thank you from, um, from the McCurtis family. It says, with all our thanks, we want to want you to know that we're grateful for your kind and considerate way, and we thank you for being so special. It means more than we ever could say. Amen. So we want you to govern yourselves to those announcements, and then we'll have Reverend Langeno to come, Langeno to come and read the scripture. It'll be followed by Reverend Vincent to come and share in a prayer of intercession. God bless you. Amen. Our scripture reading will be coming from Jeremiah, the third chapter, the 15th through the 18th verses, if you arise at this time, if you so desire and able. Jeremiah, the third chapter, the 15th through the 18th verses. And I will give you pastors according to the, my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land. In those days, saith the Lord, they shall see, say no more. The ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind. Neither shall they remind, remember it, neither shall they visit it. Neither shall that be done anymore. And that time they shall come, shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. There neither shall they walk anymore after the Im imagination of their evil heart. Verse 18, in those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Thanks be to God. Let us 
prepare our minds and our hearts to go to God's throne of grace today. Remember someone this morning in prayer as we ask the Lord for his mercy. Where there at the altar we can receive mercy from God. Allow mercy to plead our case. Amen. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. It is unto thee and thee alone, O God, that we give honor and praise and glory. We come this morning, Father God, because we stand in the need of prayer. We need you, God. We need you and we cannot get along without you. We ask that you would come right now, God, and have a listening ear unto us. As we call on your mighty name. Your name is above every other name, God, and beside you there is no other. There is none like thee in all the earth nor in all the heavens. And God, we come just to say thank you. We thank you for this glorious and wonderful day, September 18th, 2022. We thank you, God, because you have sent us a pastor, a man after your own heart. We say thank you, God, and we welcome him in this place, the Iconium Baptist Church. Oh, glory be unto you, God, in the highest of praise. And we glorify you and magnify your name because we know that you are a God who loves us, a God who cares for us, and a God that supplies all of our needs according to your riches and your glory. And we pause just to say thank you one more time. You've been mighty good to us, Lord. Down through the years, you watched over and kept us, even up until this present moment, day and time. And God, we are happy to look forward to that which thou shalt bring to us in the future. We bless your name, God. We thank you here. God, we come short of your glory. We thank you, dear Lord, that you are a just and a faithful God that said if we were just to confess our shortness, that you would be just and faithful to forgive us. So right now, we just thank you for your forgiveness and your mercy upon us, Lord. We confess our shortcomings and thank you for your faithfulness to forgive us in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you right now for the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. We thank you, dear Lord, for the blood that was shed for the remission of sin for all. And we thank you, God, that blood shall never lose its power. It is a wonder-working blood, and we praise your name for it. We thank you for your son, our Savior. Thank you for his life, 
his death, his fleshly resurrection. And we thank you now that he sits at the right hand of thee, petitioning on our behalf. We thank you, God, for all power is in his hands. Oh, thank you for how good you've been to me and my family. I bless your name today. I thank you, God, for the healing of my wife as she go to surgery tomorrow. I thank you in advance because, God, I just have faith in you, God, that it's already done. And I know that we must go through this earthly process. But God, I know spiritually, it is already done in your name, God. And I claim the victory this day. And your son, Jesus Christ, who was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of peace is upon his shoulders, and by his stripes, we are healed. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, thank you today. I come not praying selfishly just for Phyllis, but I pray for all those who are sick and shut in. In this household of faith, God, even in their own homes, in nursing homes, in jail houses, all across this land and country that we live, God, I pray healing for the nations. Pray that you would just wave your healing hand all across this country, this land in which we live. I pray, God, that it will allow anyone that has faith to just touch the hem of your garment. That whatever they are going through, they will be made whole right now. In Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, somebody need clothing on their backs. Somebody need food on their table. Somebody don't have a roof over their head, God, and just need a place to lie down. Oh, Lord, I pray you would bless today. That you would touch them and you would meet them at their every need. Whatever it is, God, I pray that you would use us, your people, to be instruments of your will, to touch and to, to help somebody along the way, God, in this church house, in this community in this uh, land, the city of Atlanta, the state of Georgia, and all across this world, God, we pray, oh God, that you would just touch. You would provide. You would make a way out of no way. And then, my Father, you said, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. For it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, as it did at the door of Hermon. And Father, we come today just to ask you to help us to fellowship one with another. For it is indeed good for all of us to come together to lift up your name, to give you glory, to give you honor and praise. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the man that's going to bring us the word of life. We pray that you would bless that word on this earth as it is in heaven. Oh God, we pray that it would be a word that lift up, bow down heads, strengthen broken hearts, mend, oh God, torn relationships, break down walls, God, and, and build up love. We thank you, God, for him. Pray that you would sit him down and stand up in him. And let his, your word go forth unto us. Now, Lord, there's some sick and shut in that we want to remember. We want to start by remembering the bereaved family. Miss Peggy Maggard Lindsay. The loss of her mother, Miss Carol Hawkins. Bless that family. Be with them right now. Strengthen them in their hour. Oh God, you called home a soldier. But then God, we know that when you do, you always have a ram 
in the bush. We just ask that you would be with them during this hour. Lord, and then we pray for Miss Cynthia McCurtis, that you would continue to strengthen her family. Her mother was eulogized here on Wednesday. We pray that they would know they have the victory. She had the victory, God, and they too will see her again. We thank you this morning for our sick and shut in here, Brother Robert Colquitt, Angelo Wright, Mother Elise Daniels, Sister Willie May Harvey, she's here, Sister Eunice Sappho, she's here, Brother Maylon Jackson and Julius Kahn, Brother Dominique Edmonds, Sister Lily Lane, she's here, Brother Gary Vincent, Oh Lord, Sister Mary Colbert, Sister Lily Lane, Brother Gary, Sister Mary Colbert, Brother Lorenzo Lindsay, Miss Evelyn Lindsay, Miss Mary Russo, the sister of Brother Ma, Sister Mother Ma Reed and Clarence Simpson, James Anthony Akins, my nephew, Lord, Miss Edith Lindsay. Mother of Reverend Lindsay and grandmother of Brother Mark and Diane and all those others whose names I may not have called that may be on this list or may not have knowledge of, God. We pray that you will continue to work as only you can, Father. Do as only you can do. And we pray and ask it, Father God, by faith that you said that we should ask anything in thy name and believe in our hearts it is willed and petitioned to be done. God, we come asking in the name of Jesus that it be so. And then, God, we pray your majesty upon this Iconium Baptist Church. God, to God be the glory for all the mighty, wonderful things that thou hast done in all this earth, in everything that you're going to do here, God, may it be blessed and magnified in your name. And Lord, when we come, but Father, before I end my prayer, let me just say thank you for Reverend Jordan and his wife and his daughter. We ask your blessings upon them, God. Will you just continue to shower down blessings upon them? May you bless everything that their hands touch, everywhere they go, every step they take. I pray you dispatch your angels all around them, that they would be with them and go with them and go before them, making the pathway straight. And God, may you get all the glory, all that praise. And when we come to the end of praying time, when we have to go in the room and come out no more, when we have to give up the busy walks of life on this side of the river of Jordan, Lord, we just pray and ask you a resting place somewhere in your kingdom, God. We're not particular well about We just ask you a resting place where we can continue to worship and praise your name. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen. Amen.
Come on, put your hands together. Give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, give him some praise now. He's worthy. He's worthy. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Call for the ushers for the offering.
is come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own, as we give on thee. Amen. Thank you. 
church say amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Just put it all in his hand. Amen. amen. Praise God. We want to definitely <clears throat> thank Stephen's young adult choir. Amen. Let's give him a hand clap of praise again. Thank you for singing. Singing so strong and especially on this first day. Um, as my role as pastor here at Iconium Baptist Church. We're so thankful again to, to the search committee for the work that they've, they've done and to all of you uh, who, uh, who has been praying or have been praying for uh, this, uh, this time during the selection period. And I do want to um, thank my, my brother uh, Vincent and brother Langino for, uh, we know that um, uh, they, they had a heart as well to lead this congregation, but I thank them for being here for the support throughout the process as well. And so we know that uh, the Lord will use us as a team. Uh, amen. I said as a team. Amen. Um, and so I am a team player. And I, I, liked, I like to have a good team as we uh, understand and know that we are in the same body. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. And I've already prayed against him this morning, just a few moments ago, that God would rebuke any spirit that is not of him so that the church of God, because the church of God belongs, this church belongs to God, it doesn't belong to me. I don't want that to ever get misconstrued. Uh, Iconium, you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. I've only come along as an under shepherd to lead the church in this season and to occupy until Jesus comes to take the church home. Amen? Or until he takes me home, whichever comes first. But I am nothing more than an under-shepherd. I want to, before I move on, I want to introduce some very special people uh, to, to you today. My wife and my daughter, you know 
But we have we have some students from Carver College, Carver Bible College. Amen. Will y'all stand? TJ, take your hat off, please, brother. Thank you, man. Amen. Thank God for these young people. Amen. Three of them have recently given their life to Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated. Amen. We thank God for that. I would ask that you Iconium wrap your arms around them today. Shake hands with them and show them your love. Amen. The love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We've got three, three students that are far from home. One from Arizona, one from Colorado, one from Florida. Um, and so please, I think I got that all right, right? Amen. So um, y'all help me uh, to just welcome them. They gave me commitment that they would be here today, and they, and they kept that commitment. And they are friends of mine, and we love them at Carver, and uh, we thank God for them. Thank y'all so much for coming. Praise the Lord. Uh, also, today um, is the Usher Board's anniversary, 108th anniversary of the Usher Board. And we do congratulate those of you who are serving and have served um, uh, on the Usher Board. I want to just say, can I, in reference to the ushers, uh, Brother Chairman, a uh, story goes like this. Mahatma Gandhi was uh, a little... Um, concerned about the caste system in India. But he knew that the Christians had a, a different way of living and dealing with things. And so he walked down to the local church, Christian church, to join in the service at that particular time. To His, his thought was that he would wait for the pastor and speak to the pastor. Um, to receive some, some uh, inspiration or encouragement on how to deal with the caste system that he was dealing with. So as he walked down to the church, he walked into the doors and he met the usher. The usher looked at him and said, you're not welcome here. Go worship with your own kind and turned him away. What a tragedy um, Mahatma Gandhi perhaps would have come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal savior had that not occurred. And so I thank God for ushers that are smiling, that are welcoming um, people into uh, the house of the Lord for we never know um, what the situation may be in the life of that person. And we know that we should be servants of the Lord to welcome all people of all color, all ethnics, ethnicities, all nations, all tongues into the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. My prayers also, if I omit it, I think uh, for those who are uh, others who are on the sick and the shut-in, so we pray for you and for them as well. I want to take some time to go into the book of Jeremiah today, if I might. I ask you to call your attention there. The scripture has been read, so I'm not going to make you stand again or read it again. Amen. Uh, because Reverend Longino read that for me. Eh? I asked him to read that. But before we go on, I want to tell you a little bit about me in terms of preaching. Uh, we're uh, going to make sure that we always use the word of God. I invite you to bring the word of God. I'm a Bible teaching, Bible preaching preacher as you might know. And so I love the word of God and I know the word of God is supreme. There is no other truth. There's only one truth and that is the word of God. There's nothing more supreme. We don't take anything from it and we don't add anything to it. It is the word of God. And so we'll be preaching in context. So in other words, we will preach from the word of God what the printed word of God has, has for us to learn. And so in context, we have to go back and we have to read uh, the word of God before. We don't want to take a scripture and not read and know the full context of it. And so I'll be sharing with you today from the book of Jeremiah. And I will tell you that God has ordained and reserved this season for me to lead Iconium into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. 
And for those who are anticipating knowing me and finding out a little bit more about me, I will tell you that I also am anticipating and looking forward uh, to knowing uh, more about our new church home. But I want you to know that I'm just a man, a regular man, a lover of people who will, by God's grace, teach you and love on you in the next chapter of our lives together. My life and philosophy of ministry and preaching style has been shaped by God, who has empowered me by the Holy Ghost. I will preach only what can be verified in this holy writ. Know that even when there may be times of rebuke or times of reproof or instructions and corrections in righteousness that will always be conducted with pure intentions and with the love of Jesus Christ. So let's begin our journey. In chapter one of this book of Jeremiah, we see that God calls and commissions Jeremiah at an early age to carry a message to Israel. And I, I want to say uh, and emphasize that it was an early age because some young people might get the idea that you have to be old to share in the, in the gospel of Jesus Christ or in the work of the ministry. But this, this message, this commission by, Jamer, by God to Jeremiah was to carry the message to Israel and to her unfaithful sister, Judah. Israel uh, had been split up um, the, from the northern kingdom was Israel and the southern kingdom, Judah. And God's people had played the role of the harlot and had committed adultery with idols. In other words, they'd gone away from worshiping God and him only as they were taught in the commandments that were given by Moses. However, Jeremiah's job was to preach to Israel and to show her the error of her ways and to request her return to the following of the Lord. Now, Israel's priests and its magistrates and all of its leaderships you see, had led, thank you, uh, brother and sister ushers, uh, had led Israel into idolatry. However, Jeremiah was sent to tell them that if, if, if she would repent and return to the Lord, uh, God would design for her new pastors who would return her to the character of God. You see, this whole ideal and issue or this institution, let me say it more formally, this institution of the church where the pastor, the under shepherd is here to lead the people of, of God. I am to lead you so that you uh, will develop the character of God. Do I have any witnesses here today? The character of God, that is to have the heart of God, to love God. God and to know God. And the only way that you can know God and to love God and develop the character of God is that you must develop a relationship and devotion to God, which means that throughout your life, throughout the week or the, or the days of the week, there should be some quiet time spent with you and the Lord. And there should be some time of prayer and meditation and some time for reading God's word. I'm not talking about just reading a verse for the day, but really reading God's word so that you understand what it is that God is saying to us. And so these would be spiritual leaders in Israel at this time would not lead the people. They were not leading them into spiritual fidelity, but they've been leading them into idolatry. But God would give them new pastors. That would teach them and to keep them on the path that God has for them. In today's world, we often find pastors who have adopted, too many of our pastors today have adopted a worldview that is contrary to God's word. This would be spiritual idolatry. 
I heard a statistic the other day that only 35%, 35 to 37 percent of all pastors to include all clergy in the Catholic and Protestant churches that only 37% yes, sir. Yes, sir. really believe the word of God. We got a problem, America. 37%. But what God wants us to do is he wants pastors that he calls who are designed by him not to be afraid to preach and teach a biblical worldview of God's word. This is spiritual fidelity. So what is a biblical worldview? What do you mean with a biblical worldview? Well, we have to understand that this, in God's economy, things are different than they are in the world. And so God has standards and God has rules and God has regulations and boundaries and restrictions, but those are there not to harm us, but to conform us to his image. I call him, I realize that God has shaped me as he did in Jeremiah. In eternity past, he shaped me while I was still in my mother's womb to proclaim the rich gospel of Jesus Christ, should I say before I was in my mother's womb. 32 years ago, God called me when I was 26 years old to preach the gospel. Yes, I was a young man. For you young people, I was a young man when God called me. I should say uh, when, when I answered his call. Uh, so there was some running for a couple of years. But, 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 but though I was older than Jeremiah was at the time, I, I, I was also apprehensive as Jeremiah was apprehensive. But God encouraged my heart and he promised not to compromise his gospel was my commitment and remains my commitment to God. And since God is the one who calls the pastor, he is the one who designs the path of the pastor. One of the things that I, I like right off with Iconium is when I had the interview, I asked uh, uh, the search committee, how, how, does, how well does Iconium follow the leadership of pastors? And they answered in the affirmative very well. I, I, I tested that question and had a conversation with the chairman, with Deacon Wells, the other day. And I asked the very same question with the very same answer. So I am happy, amen, somebody, uh, that the people of God respect and love the, the man of God. But in this New Testament of life, the pastor must preach only what is written in the word of God. I hope there's no one who, 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 who will be offended by the fact that I'll be preaching from the word of God. In fact, the chairman said to me the other day, uh, Chairman Wells said to me, he said, Pastor, we need uh, the word to be preached. We want you to preach the word of God. And I chuckled and I said, Deacon, Chairman, you don't have to worry about that. Because if I ever stop doing anything but other than preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, you have the right to cart me out of here because I will be crazy. And so the pastor is not to foretell. There are pastors and people who call themselves prophets. And let me share with you that the prophetic age is over with. There are no more prophets. Jesus is the final prophet. And that's what the word of God tells us in Hebrews chapter 1. He is the final prophet. However, the pastor is to foretell. In other words, I have to spend time in this Bible, in the Word of God, and sharing uh, some time with God and the Holy Spirit in the Word of God so that I might foretell, to go forth, or to tell what God has said to the church. Because John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What does that mean, Pastor? That means that the word that is Jesus, Logos in the Greek, means that Jesus is the written expression of God. And there is nobody who comes and can change the word of God. His word is final. 
And so the pastor is to preach what is written by Jesus in his word. 2 Timothy 3.16 says that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. That means that all scripture is God breathed. It comes from the very breath of God. And so some men and people will say, well, uh, I don't know about that word. I can't, uh, that, that Bible, there are men who wrote that word. But I want you to know that Second uh, Peter says that, that, that holy men of God were inspired by God to write the word of God. That means that God took men with their own personalities and with their own differences and backgrounds and God breathed inside of them so that they would breathe or write that is God's breath that is his word yes, sir. Yes, sir. we often call it verbal plenary so this is God's word God's word has stood the test of time over more than 1600 years the Bible was written with 40 different authors and it still has continuity and it still remains the world's bestseller because the Bible has life for those who need to be resuscitated. God's design for the pastor can also be found in Ephesians chapter 4, 11 through 12. There are two things that, the, that Ephesians, Paul says to the church at Ephesus there. Number one, the pastor is to equip the church for ministry. Oh, we're in for a good journey. We're in for a good journey. Because my job is to make sure that the church understands first what ministry is. And then that the church gets involved in ministry. You see, what has happened in America is that we've been so, we've been so concerned and we've been so conditioned about coming to church and worshiping in the four walls. But nothing goes on Monday through Saturday. And I, let me just let you in on a secret. You can't and I can't really worship God the way that God designed us to worship him if we're not involved in ministry. It is ministry that moves us to worship God. Because when we see God doing what God does in ministry, we come back energized, happy to worship because of what God has done. And so I will, will be equipping you for ministry. And then the second thing he says in Ephesians is that, that the pastor is there to build up the body of Christ. Yes, oh, that's not numerical. Sorry about that, y'all. That's not numerical. That doesn't mean that the pastor is to go out and to make sure that the church is overflowing with people in the pews. But what it does mean that the pastor teaches you so that you, as you're being built, you will go out and do the evangelizing. And then the results would be people coming to the house of the Lord. Do I have any witnesses? That's what that means. To build up the body of Christ so that we know the difference between good word and bad word. Or good gospel and bad gospel. So, in Ephesians 4, 11 and 14, you will often find that scripture refers to the pastor teacher as the shepherd teacher. That's used interchangeably, our pastor teacher that leads the people of God so that they will not be led or manipulated or tricked into believing a doctrine that will bring them to destruction. You'll have to go back and you'll have to spend some time and we'll spend some time later in the book of Ephesians. But, but, but God has called shepherds according to his heart, his own heart. But let me, let me just say to you and share with you the nature of a shepherd. In biblical times, a shepherd would spend most of his time with the life of the sheep. So he would spend so much time with the sheep's uh, his sheep that, that he would often smell like the sheep. And this is why Jesse, if you remember in scripture, forgot about his own son, David, when the prophet Samuel asked to review Jesse's sons for the next king of Israel. Because they spent a lot of time tending to the sheep. And Jesse had momentarily forgot about his son. Shepherds spend so much time with the sheep, as I said, they smell like the sheep. 
So much time is spent with the sheep that the sheep recognize the shepherd's voice. And the shepherd knows every one of his sheep. The relationship between shepherds and sheep is a very close one. So Iconium, I plan to have a very close relationship with you because that's the way God has designed his pastors. There are too many pastors who are, who are acting as though they can't be touched by the congregation. There are too many pastors that, that, that are too busy to spend time with the congregation. So in this journey, you will find that, that I, I, I'm a lover of people. I'm a lover of God's people, and I will be a lover of Iconium. Real shepherds, they look alike. Listen to what I said. Real shepherds look alike. Some pastors will tell other young, young pastors coming up, you don't want to look like somebody else. You don't Listen, if they follow Jesus Christ, if they follow the word of God, they should look alike. Why? Because we are formed in the image of God and spiritually when God calls his pastors, he has designed them. Yes, we have our own differences. Yes, we have our different ways of doing things. We have different methods, but we should look alike when it comes to the word of God, when it comes to loving people, when it comes to giving hope to people, when it comes to dealing with the pains and the cares of the church. We should look alike not differently and so real shepherds look alike because God has one design for his shepherds they must be called and chosen by him to lead and to feed the sheep with knowledge and understanding that's what your scripture says there in verse 15 that's why God I'm sorry yes uh, that's in verse 15 that's why God called pastors to feed the sheep with knowledge and understanding. Shepherds develop a concern for the sheep so that if one is lost or one is injured, that the shepherd will leave the entire flock just to locate and to tend to that one sheep. The shepherd knows the danger, you see, that sheep may get into. So there are things that the shepherd must do to protect the sheep. Do I have any witnesses? David speaks of the great shepherd in Psalms 23 who leads us beside the still waters. This is important to note because often shepherds have to go upstream before the sheep drink from the stream. They go up the stream because streams often are, are flowing rapidly. And so he must go upstream to dam up the stream so that the flow of the stream is slow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because if the sheep were to step down into the stream and drink of the water while the stream is flowing, the water would fill their wool and pull the sheep in and drown them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see, caring shepherds are there to protect the sheep. In the valleys where the shadows of death are lurking with wolves, bears, and lions that are prowling to destroy the defenseless sheep. You see, sheep don't have any, any offensive weapons. Sheep are considered dumb animals. With one of the sheep, when one of the sheep are bruised or wounded, the shepherd soothes the sheep by using oil. He anointed my head with oil that removes and soothes the pains of the scrapes and the bumps that we get as we go through the wilderness. The shepherd often, you see, carries a staff. And this staff serves us to a twofold purpose. On one end, it has a hook to retrieve the sheep that have fallen over the cliff. And he pulls them back. To safety. You understand what I'm saying? So the shepherd, the pastor, oftentimes has to use the word to go get sheep that have gone wayward or have lost their way or fallen, and he lifts them back up. In fact, that's the reason why we have the pulpit. The pulpit is a 
is, a, is, is the place where the pastor preacher pulls people out of the pit. Do I have any witnesses there? And then the other side of this staff has a club to both fight off predators and to also correct the sheep when they get out of line. And so the word of God, as a pastor, I will be preaching and teaching to you the word of God. And sometimes it may be used for correction. And other times it's used to make sure that we keep the wolves and keep all of the predators away. Because you belong, you are important. God knows and loves you. That he knows that you're important because he made you. And so... The pastors are there to protect. It's important to know these things so that we will understand why God designed the pastor. So there will be times when we are in our flesh that somebody's going to be upset about something that has been preached from this pulpit. But if you stay with me, I can tell you that I will never preach anything from the pulpit that cannot be verified in the word of God. So if you get a little angry or if you get a little disgusted, we can have a talk and we can find out by going through scripture whether it's the word of God or not. So let us find out more about this text. God told Jeremiah that he would design, he would create and shape pastors who possess a heart like his. However, we need to know what God's heart is, what it's like towards his people. In chapter 2, God reminds Israel that I brought you out of the land of Egypt and that he brought them through the fruitless land of the wilderness. As a shepherd, God's heart, God heard his people's cry and he attended to their needs. But they repaid him with infidelity. God has done a lot of things I know in our lives, in each of our lives. I don't know you personally all yet. But I know that God has done something in all of our lives. I know there's a testimony that everybody could share how God has taken us through our personal wilderness. If you haven't been through a wilderness, just wait. It's coming. But we must remember to not to repay God with infidelity. That is, that, that we chase other things, things that don't matter in the world of Christendom. And so these people had forgotten how God had been to them in delivering them from their brokenness. They chased and began to chase the things of, of the world rather than to remain faithful to him who had delivered them from the distress of spiritual depression and eternal destruction. And in today's time, people are unfaithful to God, failing to attend worship service. I heard, I think, the deacon saying this morning in Sunday school, quoting the Hebrews 10, 25, uh, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, as is the custom of some. And so Christians, if you're a Christian, you ought to be at church. You ought to be at church. You go to work. In today's time, we, we, we've, got to, we've got to understand that, uh, that certain events are, are not so necessary. Uh, but we need to be in God's word and be in God's church. And instead of reading our Bibles, many people are reading more and more Facebook pages and Instagrams and and whatever the things that the young people use today, uh, and magazines and novels, we do more of that than we do reading God's word. But I want you to know that this is God's love letter to us. It is his love letter to us. What I love about our God is that he's always full of mercy. My grandmother used to say, baby, before she went home to be with the Lord. You know, God never brings destruction without first giving a warning. But God gave a warning to Israel. And he was saying to them, if you repent, this is what I'll do. I'll give you new pastors. 
I'll give you those that are according to my heart, not according to how they're supposed to be structured or structured in the world's eye. And so God gives this, this warning. The reward would be that they would receive that new pastor and it would be after God's own heart. And if we want to see a picture of God's heart, we must look in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. And in there we find yes, Jesus. Yes, Come on, somebody. Oh, yes, we find Jesus who did not make a reputation for himself. But the Bible says that Jesus came as a servant. A pastor should be a servant. I will be a servant to serve you here at Iconium. And the Bible says that Jesus was not only a person who didn't make himself of any reputation and, but, and that he came as a servant, but the Bible says that he humbled himself. Not only did he humble himself, but he became obedient. He became obedient even to the death of the cross. Do I have any witnesses? Pastors are to be servants who look and love like Jesus. The Bible teaches us as pastors, Peter teaches us not to lord over God's, God's people. That we're not to... To, to, to distress God's people, but we are to love and to reprove and, and to rebuke with love. So in verse 15, we find that God would design for Israel pastors that are, are that pastors with the following characteristics here. I'm, all, I'm, I'm, I'm halfway, most of halfway through here. In verse 15, we find this. Listen, these characteristics. The pastor is to feed you or to lead you. That is to pastor you. Pasture you. Not pastor, but pasture. That is to take you through the green pastures. In the life of the uh, shepherd in Israel, green pastures were often hard to find. It's a, it's a place of somewhat uh, wilderness and sometimes dry. And the shepherd had to be skillful, skillful in finding green pasture in this dry climate. The topography, or the, that is the layout uh, of the land, was so hilly. And so it provided some difficulties for the shepherd in finding green pastures. So he had the mythology to go through. He had to take his time and go through so that he would find the green pastures. And so that's why the pastor has to take time to get in God's word and to read God's word and to meditate on God's word so that he understands the difficulties of the word of God so that he is able to share that with the people of God. 2 Timothy says in 2.15, uh, it says that, uh, that, that we ought to study to show ourselves approved unto God. A workman that ne should never be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yes. This is what the man of God does. He has to study. He has to prepare himself. And so God telling, uh, uh, Jer was telling Jeremiah to tell the people that if they would correct themselves before the Lord, he would provide not false prophets, but prophets that were designed to keep the people in a close relationship with him. Iconium, God has sent you a shepherd that is not perfect, but one who is committed to feeding you from the only pasture that matters. Preaching from a well that springs up with living water. And as pastor, I only lead you, will only lead you through the supreme word of God. No fairy tales, no soap operas, no politics, but the pure word of God. The second point, my last point here is, the, is that God designs pastors to lead the sheep with knowledge and understanding. And so that's why Bible studies and that's why Sunday schools and that's why workshops and prayer breakfasts and, and those kinds of things are so important because it is there that you get a chance to read, to share, to ask questions, to find out God's plan for the church. In God's economy, true pastors will provide the word which provides God's purpose for his church today. 
And God's pastors will preach the word in season and out of season. That is, when it's popular, because sometimes it's popular, and when it's not popular. And there are times when the word of God will not be popular. We are designed to work through and to endure, endure hardness as a good soldier, as Paul told Timothy. We are to love on and to protect the sheep so that she will not get carried away by every wind and doctrine. And that scripture is in Ephesians where we were earlier. The pastor is to teach the church how to dress in spiritual holiness so that she will know the full abundant plan of God for her life. Then God's shepherds are to lead or feed the sheep with understanding, not just knowledge. It is important that the church does not only learn scripture, but has the wisdom for application. And so whenever I stand up, I will try and make sure that you have an application to the scripture. Because you need to know, now pastor, we heard a good sermon, but how do we use that sermon for our lives? You know, it's too many times people get up and just preach a sermon and people come in and they have, they're hopeless and they leave out hopeless because no one has given them the word of God and how to apply that to their lives. And so he said, these pastors will lead you to understanding. Each Sunday, you will get the message, the word of God. And what I want you to know is you don't want just information in your head. But you should desire that the information that you have ingested will make transformation in our lives. It's not good enough just to hear that good sermon. But we should seek how that particular sermon will transform our lives so that we become more like Christ. I just have to lay it out on, because I know people are trying to figure out what? What, what do we expect from Pastor Jordan? I'm laying it out to you. But another wonderful thing about God's design for pastors is that God designed a designated power for the pastor. You see, God never does anything without his spirit. It was the spirit of God, when you look at Jeremiah chapter 1, when God is commissioning Jeremiah, it was the spirit of God that touched the lips of Jeremiah and put his words in Jeremiah's mouth to preach to Israel. Jeremiah, Jeremiah was just afraid. I'm too young. I can't do this. I, 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 I don't have the experience. I don't have this. I don't have, and, 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 and God told him, Jeremiah, I will put my words in your mouth. In, 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 in other words, uh, God, the pastor, is only the mouthpiece, but the Holy Spirit is the power that works through the pastor to move the church into a pattern of obedience to God's word. Uh, now listen, this same spirit is the power that will touch your life with biblical information and trans, uh, translate it into spiritual transformation so that you and I will live committed lives before the world that is so full of idolatry. I wish I had some witnesses here. I'm going to have to make it plain to you before I leave. Let me just tell you like this. Transforming a believer's life is something like the process of making good maple syrup. Think of the process of refining maple syrup. Maple trees are tapped with buckets that hang under the taps. And out drips a sap which is thin and clear. It's sort of like water. But on a day, a good day that is, 50 trees could yield anywhere between 30 and 40 gallons of sap. But essentially, that sap is useless at that point with only a hint of sweetness. Then as the bucket fills, they are emptied into a large bins that sit over an open fire. The sap comes to a slow boil. And as it boils, its water content is reduced and its sugars are concentrated. 
Follow with me now. Hours later, it has developed a rich flavor and a golden brown color. But still, it must be strained several times so that the impurities might be removed. And then it goes through a heating process. It's reheated, it's bottled, and graded for quality. And in the end, those 30 to 40 gallons of sap are reduced to one gallon of pure, delicious maple syrup, which is far better than that cheap imitation syrup, sugar water, that they sell in the stores passing it for maple syrup. So what God does at the time of salvation is gives us pastors who during the rawness of the believer leads us through the process of being heated with trials and then God reheats us again and, and then we're heated with testings and then he reheats us again and we're heated with hardships. And this process reduces the sin much like the unneeded water in the syrup and consecrates and concentrates us with the presence of the Holy Spirit. I wish I had some witnesses. As we are experiencing this process, God removes the impurities from our lives. It's called sanctification. And then we are transformed into his character. And no longer do we look like cheap imitations Christians, but we are like that rich maple syrup. We're Christians that have developed the character of God. God approves us and man understands us that we're different, that we look different, that we act different, and that we have the character of God. So let me close it out by saying we must understand the following. Let me give you five things here. We must understand in, in summarization. We must understand that it is God that calls pastors. If anybody's upset or angry or disappointed, I want you to know it's God that calls pastors. But he calls pastors according to his own heart. Number two, God designs pastors according to his heart which means that is his personal signature. If you see a man who labors in the word of God, if you see a man who meditates in the word of God, if you see a man who's not afraid to stand on the word of God, if you see a man that calls people to repentance, if you see a man that teaches people the pure word of God, you know that God has his personal signature stamped on his heart. Because real pastors don't care if you like them or not. Because they know who they serve. The third thing is that God designs pastors for his agenda. You see, I can't just come up with an agenda. I must take the time to pray to God and talk to God and say, God, what is it that you will have for the life of the church at 1050 McDaniel Street? I'm his servant. And the fourth thing is, is that God designed pastors to lead people with knowledge and understanding. Why? So that you and I will understand what it means to obey God. Because one of the most important words that you'll ever need in your life as a Christian is obedience. Because God rewards obedience. You can never disobey God and win. But you can't obey God and lose either. Some of you may have heard that before. God, the last thing, designs pastors to lead his people to obedience. That is because of boundaries. Because God sets up those boundaries. Not to restrict us, to hurt us, but for restrictions to protect us. So I come him, get ready for the journey. You see, a good God, plus a good church, plus a good pastor, equals an obedient and transform church who God will initiate and will invigorate to transform a community in distress to a community of peace. And that if we get the word of God deep in our lives, that community on the outside of these walls 
will notice that we belong to God. They will notice a God-like character and be drawn to the Lord. So what you'll find with me as in the pastor is a man designated and designed by the good hand of God who called me according to his heart, not that I was perfect or I am perfect, but to preach the acceptable day of the Lord. I will preach about the Savior who, before the foundation of the world, said, if I, and if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. In other words, Jesus said that it, the word says that if Jesus would be lifted up on the cross, he had to go to Calvary and he had to die and pay the sins of for sinful man. He said that from that cross, he would draw men unto him. And I want you to know that I will preach Jesus, the root out of dry ground, the humble servant, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the wonderful counselor, the prince of peace. The mighty God, I will preach to you the El Shaddai, that is the almighty God. I will preach to you about El Adonai, that is that God is Lord. I will preach to you about Jehovah Shalom, because somebody might come and they might not have the hope that they ought to have. But I will tell you that Jehovah Shalom will bring you peace into your lives. I will preach to you about Jehovah Jireh. Somebody might have more month than they have money, but I know God will provide for us. He's a God that provides. I will preach to you about Jehovah Jireh because he's the God that sees all. He knows all. He knows what's in the heart of men. In fact, he knows what's in the heart of those who are sitting here today. I will preach to you the Jehovah Rapha. Somebody needs healing here today. Praise God. God is a God that can heal you. I will preach to you the cross of Jesus Christ and how he marched down that road to Calvary, the road of Via Della Rosa. I will teach you about the sufferings of Jesus Christ. I will teach you about how he hung there all day Friday and all day Saturday, but early Sunday morning. He got up from the grave and because he got up from the grave you and I have a right to the tree of life because he got up from the grave you and I have hope to walk just a little bit longer because he got up from the grave we've got peace that surpasses all understanding I wish I had some witnesses here today I'll preach to you about his burial but I also will happily preach to you about his resurrection because he got up from the grave and that same Jesus that got up from the grave will come back one day in the eastern skies and the skies will open up Jesus himself will appear the Bible says that those who have died will get up out of the grave but they will not prevent those who are standing here we will all be caught it up caught up to meet him in the air i'm looking for the day not sure about you but i'm looking for the day when jesus will return i'm tired of all this stuff that's going on in the earth today ain't you tired with all the evilness the backbiting the infighting the outfighting ain't you ready for jesus to return he's coming back for a church that has no spots or no blemishes great god hallelujah the great shepherd jesus christ will come back to get his church and we will reign and super reign we will reign and super reign we will reign and super reign we shall be chained in the moment of the twinkling of the eye to look like jesus anybody here today happy about the word of god that tells us how to make ourselves in the subject ourselves to the to the character of god anybody here happy for jesus anybody here ready to celebrate jesus christ as lord of laws 
and King of Kings, the mighty God, great God, hallelujah. You ought to say amen in here. You ought to say amen in here. He's a good God. Woke you up this morning. Started you on your way. He's a good God. And he's called pastors. He's called pastors. According to his heart. He's called them. And so I'm here to preach and to proclaim that Jesus lives. There are no other gods. There's only one God. Elohim. God the Father. God the Son and Holy Ghost. But yet, one God. There may be somebody here today who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ and the free pardoning of your sin. You can come know the Lord Jesus Christ today. You may say, does it take all that for the preacher? Now, I'll preach to you the word. But Jesus is my personal savior. So, excuse me for celebrating my God. That's my celebration for Jesus who died for me. Because I'm not worth it. But he looked beyond my thoughts and he saw my needs. I'm not worth it. But the blood of Jesus has washed me. And he cleansed me. And I thank him for it. And I praise him for it. And I worship him for it. The doors of the church are open. You may come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Giving the preacher your hand but God your heart. You may come by letter. Or Christian experience. But come today. Is there one? Is there one that will come to Jesus Christ today? Amen. Is there one, another? Come. Don't wait. You may not have time. Don't wait. If you don't know Jesus, you need to come and know him today. Is there another? You still got time. God wants to save you if you're not saved. And if there's a need to come back and to repent, 1 John 1 9 says that if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you need a heart to be restored to God, you can come today, rededicate your life. to know who's come and I'll let him share with why he's come. With my heart being filled right now, knowing the dynamic leadership that I will be under, I thank God for an opportunity to put it in my heart and in my mind to make Iconium Baptist Church 
my church home. I'm right here in the community, right here in this church. It feels good to be at home with my new church family. Thank you and thank God. It's a pleasure for the church. God bless you. Amen. All the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you, brother. Amen. Welcome. Amen. God bless you. God, we thank God for you, all of you, God's people, God's children who come into the house of the Lord today. <clears throat> we trust that you will have a wonderful week. Uh, are there any other announcements or anything that um, should um, claim our attention before we close out with the benediction? Nothing more. Amen. Thanks again to the students of Carver for you coming out and sharing with us today, amen, and keeping your commitment, to, amen, praise God, amen, thank God for any other, were there any, I guess I may have missed it, maybe looking at my program, any other visitors that were here today, no, yes sir, yes sir, brother, amen, Forty years of marriage. <clears throat> Isn't that a blessing? Amen. Amen. That is a blessing. Praise God. Forty years of marriage. We thank God for for that and for marriages. I heard of you guys. I'm sorry. Dude. You ain't, <clears throat> now, Deke, we just got through preaching the word now. <laughs> Amen. Hey, but you still you still feel young. Amen. Amen. I, 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 I'm happy always to announce about uh, people who've been married and to speak about people who've been married for a long, long time. Amen. And 40 years is not a long time, but it is a time of commitment, especially when you love your spouse. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You're in love with the one who God has given you. I can't wait because we're going to be talking about some time down the road about marriages and how important they are and having marriage um, workshops and things of that nature. Just looking forward, Iconium, to being here with you. Thank God for you again. Pray for me and pray for um, Carver uh, College, if you would. Just keep us in your prayers as well. Amen. If nothing else is to claim our attention. We can stand. Fellowship, what a joy in on the everlasting arm. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind, leaning on the everlasting arm. Leaning, 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 I'm all alone. Let's look to the Lord. Our Father and our God, we do thank you for this day that you've given us. We thank you for your word, O oh God, that is true, O oh Father, and liberating. Now bless all of these, Father, that belong to you, O oh Lord. Keep them, 
O oh, Father, and keep us all until we shall meet again. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we're able to ask of Jesus Christ our Lord, world without end. And let every heart sing. Amen. Shake hands with one another and show yourselves friendly. God bless you. See you all next week.